Welcome to Jerusalem Unplugged, the only podcast dedicated to Jerusalem, its history, and its people. Your host, Roberto Matza, will bring you guests discussing their relationship with the Holy City, a journey through history, society, feelings, and hopes for the future. Follow the podcast on all social media platforms at Jerusalem Unplugged. Welcome to Jerusalem Unplugged, the podcast dedicated to Jerusalem, its history, and its people. I'm your host, Roberto Mazza, and today, from Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, your guest and my guest is Vincent Lemire. Vincent Lemire is the director of the Centre de Recherche Française à Jerusalem, or the Centre for French Research in Jerusalem, and is the author of a number of volumes about Jerusalem, uh, which we're going to talk about. Vincent, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Now, Vincent is a good friend of mine. We've been working together on a number of projects, but that doesn't mean I'm going to change my first question. So, Vincent, what is your Jerusalem? In other words, what is your connection with the city? I'm an historian. Uh, I'm an historian, so maybe I will, I will tell you a, a story. Uh, I will try to tell you the history of Jerusalem. My first time here was in April 1995. So we were in the yeah, we were in the middle of the Oslo peace process. There, there was a lot of hope here. We went for dinner in Hamana or Jericho. We went we went everywhere from west to east, and and I had many friends here. In West and East Jerusalem, I still have, but the situation was way more, uh, yes, way more uh, hopeful. And so this was my Jerusalem d- during that time. I don't know if it's still uh, the same. Eh? And sometimes, somehow, I'm thinking, why, why I'm still here? It is. I think this is a question for a lot of people here in Jerusalem or around Jerusalem or outside Jerusalem, but somewhere they, kn- they know that they will come back. It, it's a strange thing. I, I spent I spent five full years without coming here from 2004 to 2009. Uh, it was at the end of my PhD. I thought that I it was done with Jerusalem, I thought. Really, essentially, I, I, and I did work on other topics and so on. And I don't know why in 2009, in this office, believe me or not, I'm just in this very office where we are sitting now in the CRFG, because I was invited in, in Birzeit University, uh, yes, for the annual Congress of something. And so I just, I, 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 I organized to just, just to come to, from Paris to Birzeit and back. But the, the director uh, in that time of CRFG, Sophie Kessler Lesbich, she passed away a few months after that. She she wrote to me and she told me, why just come and have a coffee? And we were seated exactly on that table. And she told me, you, you haven't finished with Jerusalem. It's not done. And I said, yes, I'm sure I'm, I'm fed up with this city. And I, I, I don't want to. And, and just, yeah, I... I so she, she said, why, why are you in Birzeit today? And I was invited, I, mean, I have friends there, and, and I, but it's, it's done. And, and she said, no, it's not done. You have a lot of work to do, and you have a responsibility, and, and so on. And it was Sophie Kessler-Mis Gish, and she passed away a few months after that. And I'm not saying that Sophie was, but Sophie was among many people, like, you know, a sign on the road, <laughs> and finally, I came, I came back and even I came back with my family and, and children from 2012 to 2014 and I launched the Open Jerusalem project and after now I'm, I'm, I'm director here. So yes, uh, my Jerusalem is a, yes, it's a, long, uh, it's a long story and uh, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not always easy, but I'm still here, yeah. It's hard to escape Jerusalem. I share the same story at some point when I finished my PhD and I worked, uh, you know, in Jerusalem, uh, 
publish my stuff. And then all of a sudden, I, I really wanted to work on something different. And yet I'm still here working on Jerusalem, coming to Jerusalem. And it, it's very hard to escape this, this yeah, yeah. logic and the chains, this in a the, sense. This is the real Jerusalem syndrome, I think. I, I think so. I think I would agree with you. More than uh, the, the syndrome of uh, becoming some sort of prophet is really to get attached to the city and never yeah. being able to leave that city. Yeah. I want to talk to you about your work. You know, your work is extensive. There's a lot of things to talk about Jerusalem through your work, uh, which is fascinating in many ways. So I remember reading your first uh, work on Jerusalem years ago. And I must say it was very hard, not only because my French was good enough to read academic French, but also because of the topic itself. Your first work was dedicated to the question of water. Uh, in French, the book is called La Soif de Jerusalem. And essentially, you, you really looked into the history of water in Jerusalem, which is something that not many uh, think about it, despite the scarcity of water in the region. But there is an history about water, and there is an history of a relationship between water and Jerusalem. So I was wondering if you can tell us more about this history. Uh, you know, what's uh, what's the relationship between water and Jerusalem in the city? Yeah, it was indeed, it was my PhD work. I spent uh, I spent seven years on this work uh, from 1999 to 2006, precisely June 2006. And the book was published uh, in French in 2010. And uh, it was never translated because, as you said, it's too big. <laughs> it's way too big. It's uh, not only too big, it's way too big. But sometimes there's people here who tell me, I read the, the people who, who, who are visiting uh, Jerusalem, the tourists and so on and so. But yeah, it's, it's, a very, yeah, it's a very scientific work. And the story is, is, is that one. I, 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 I come here from Cairo. I was living in Cairo, uh, learning Arabic. And at that time, it was very easy to, to travel from Cairo to Jerusalem, even by bus, I remember, through, through, through Gaza. And, uh, and I, I had the, the, the project to work not on Jerusalem, but on, on uh, Jaffa, uh, Jaffa, 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 and municipal history of Jaffa. And uh, I spent six months working on Jaffa, looking for the municipal archives, and didn't, I didn't find it. If someone had some information, and it could be very interesting, but it's a big, big issue. Where are the municipal archives of Jaffa? I don't believe the story that it's destroyed, because it's usually the, the archives are not destroyed. They are somewhere, but uh, this is an issue. And so I was depressed, and my uh, PhD uh, uh, director told me, go to Jerusalem and work on Jerusalem. And I didn't want to. And for six months, I, I, I resisted. I said, no, I don't want to come in Jerusalem. Uh, but it's, 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 it's madness there. It's a battlefield. Uh, there is a, a, too much people and it's historians. And, and he said, go there, go there and try to walk quietly and, and try to find a way in Jerusalem. And I spent six months more. It was a good time. We, we, we had time in, in, in that in that in that time, yes, to 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 search and to look for um, a PhD uh, uh, PhD yes uh, topic, and it was Robert Hilbert, the, my director, and he used to work on uh, Alexandria, municipal history of Alexandria, and he told me why just go to the municipality of Jerusalem and ask them if they have archive. And so I, I went there in the new, new building and I asked them. There was Menachem Levy. Who, who were an excellent uh, director and archivist, and he showed me the, the municipal archives, and I immediately discovered that the water supply issue was big in the municipal archives. So, and in maybe 10 days, it makes connections because I, I had I, I read a lot of things about history of Jerusalem and ancient history and medieval history and everything, and the water was everywhere. And the, the, why? Because Jerusalem is on the top of the mountain, it's 800 uh, meters above the, the sea level, 
And so before the before you have a electric uh, pump, uh, you have to bring water from an upper level than Jerusalem, which is very difficult. So it was an issue from, like, let's say, first temple period till 1960s. So it was a way to tell a modern history of Jerusalem, 19th and, and, and 20th century history of Jerusalem, very concrete, an everyday history of Jerusalem, but with the long term, the long durée history that I wanted to, to work with, because I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm not only because we are sure, we know that, that we cannot tell a, sh a short term history of Jerusalem without looking for the long durée, because the long durée is always getting to the, to the yes, to the, to the streets and to the, and, and, and to the, and to the everyday life of the, of the people. So the work, and, and so it's, 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 you, it's, that's why I called it, uh, the subtitle is uh, Essay d'Hydro-Histoire, it's an essay of hydro-history of Jerusalem. So it's not the history of water in Jerusalem, because it's, yes, it's not a technical history. It's an history of Jerusalem through the water supply issue. And, uh, and, and it, of course, it brings a lot of a lot of uh, issues inside uh, religious, because the water is uh, religious, uh, administrative, uh, politics, uh, archaeology, and you know and memories, uh, heritage, and so I, yeah. At the end, I spent seven years on this topic, and uh, some people was 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 thinking that I I, I am. A specialist or the specialist of the of the, the water history of Jerusalem. But it's not. No, I'm I'm still a specialist of the history of Jerusalem. It was just a, a way to get in. And if I may, I mean, the, 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 throughout the chapters, you you really delved into the question of uh, of water as a way to understand the history of Jerusalem. And I was wondering if there's any story that stands out. In your in your work, and that you want to talk about something like uh, connected to a specific uh, well or water source, uh, or how people actually managed water in a city which was, you know, multi-ethnic, multi-religious, multilinguistic. So, how was the water essentially managed between the various communities? The 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 short story is is that one. It's the water. The water supply issue is is uh, is a place uh, of of meeting and of sharing, and uh, so it's it's not it's not the when you, when you say water in Jerusalem, everybody uh, think about the yeah the geopolitics issues and the settlers are are taking the the water for, to the Palestinian, which is true. Today and so on, but in in a urban context, uh, in the Ottoman context, and even at the beginning of the Mandate context, it was it was uh, yes, it was a topic for for which people are yes talking, sharing, and dealing with uh, on yes on pragmatic uh, pragmatic uh, um, ways. There is one story maybe to to tell uh, among many that the the water. Of Jerusalem is coming from two uh, is, is coming from from um, from the sky because it's raining a lot in Jerusalem. Every, everybody who, who knows the city, it, it, it's raining almost uh, the same amount of water in Jerusalem than in London, like something like 500 uh, millimeters a, uh, a year, or in Paris, or yeah, in, in, in that kind of or, or Normandy. <laughs> But the, the difference is that in Jerusalem, it's just five months, six months a year, and it's like 10 episodes very strong, and you don't have a lot, there is a, the rock everywhere, and there is a, the, the, the mountain, and so the, the issue is to get this water inside, inside the city. So that's why we have a lot of system and underground systems and, and so on. This is the, this is the first uh, structural, uh, this was the first stru structural uh, uh, um, a way to to get some uh, some uh, uh, water in Jerusalem, but the second one was a big big uh, infrastructure in south of Bethlehem between Bethlehem and uh, Hebron, uh, Al Khalil, uh, 
really on, on the road uh, in the small valley called Artas, where everybody can go now. Uh, you take the road uh, 60 and you pass Bethlehem on the left, and, and five, five kilometers after that, you turn left, and this is Artas, and there you, you will discover three huge, huge uh, uh, pools, pools, water pools. And the, the first one is coming from, let's say, before Christ. Before Christ. We, we know that during uh, Constilat, there was, there was a, one huge uh, water pool there. And there is an aqueduct from Artas Valley to Jerusalem. And we're in Jerusalem to the subterranean of the Ramel Sharif. So the, the connection in even the, the, the very place of, of, of uh, the water in Jerusalem is very important. And Artas Valley is a place where there is a lot of, of, uh, of uh, Palestinian people who are uh, making uh, you know, salads and, and fruits and, and so on, even for Jerusalem. And for centuries and centuries, they, they are always, they, 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 com they were complaining about the urban people, the, the citadins, I don't know how, how, how to say it in, in English, the urban people of Jerusalem are stealing the water of, of our cool prison of, of, uh, of Artas. And in 1925, there was a crisis, an hydraulic crisis, but among others, and the British decided to take maybe more water than other years. But, and so the, the, the villagers of Artas are complaining, like, like they did for centuries, but they are not writing anymore, urban people of Jerusalem are stealing the water of for villages of Artas, they, they are writing, the Jewish people of Jerusalem are stealing the water of our Arab villages of Artas. And this is exactly what I wanted to explain. It's not a history of water in Jerusalem, it's a history of Jerusalem and the whole <clears throat> region through the water. You can see, for example, that you have a conflict, <clears throat> a very classical one, uh, between villagers and urban people for the water, which you can have in every places in the world. But at the beginning of the Monday, Monday 1925, there is a rewording of this conflict. And because the big, huge history, geopolitic history and uh, conflictual history uh, is coming above this uh, let's say, small uh, water history. So it's, it, this is just a short example to, to show that I tried to, to build some links between this, yes, technical water history of Jerusalem and, and, and the, big, the, the big picture, the big, the big history of the, of the Holy City. Perhaps one day some of the chapters might be translated into English. We can't make this promise, but... Uh... This, this very story, this very story for the, this very story is published in the Jerusalem Quarterly years ago in Arabic and in English. Uh, if you type something to look for Artas, uh, Artas, yes, Artas, uh, Lemir, uh, Water, Jerusalem, something, you will, Jerusalem Quarterly, you will find it. So this is a step forward. Mm -hmm. You mentioned something very important. The question of uh, the, the water and water supplies as a meeting point. People met at the wells, at the water fountains, regardless of uh, identity, religion, language, because these were meeting points. So this brings me to your next work, uh, which I found fascinating. And I must say that I had the, uh, uh, the privilege to read it uh, even before it was published, Jerusalem 1900. But I'm more fascinated by the subtitles, The Age of Possibilities. And one of your arguments in the book is that by the beginning of the 20th century, Jerusalem was a city open to possibilities. There was no inevitable conflict. And this is an argument which I think we all can share, regardless of uh, different political views, that there is no such a thing as an inevitable conflict. And you are painting Jerusalem as a, as a city, like many others, where interactions led the future uh, of the people, and there were possibilities, roads that were taken, and of course, roads that were not taken. Can you tell us about this 1900, this beginning of the 20th century? Yeah, it's, it's very important uh, because 
before before it was a book, it was a lesson that I teach to my students in Marne la Vallée, east of Paris. So I don't know if you can imagine. I was trying to explain something about the history of Jerusalem to my student, uh, history student in Marne la Vallée, and I and I, I, I tried many ways: the long durée, the short term. Uh, uh, summarizing my PhD, but no, and wait, and I, I someday I had an idea, and I said, yeah, I will, I will tell them the, yeah, the Jerusalem 1900 history, which is not, of course, it's not exactly the 1900 history. It's, let's say, the end of the 19th century and the and the beginning of the of the 20th century, and we have the Young Turk Revolution. Yeah, it's still yes. Let's say till the Young Turk Revolution, which is as everybody knows, it's kind of yes, turning point in the, in the history of the of the wall uh, region. Um, it was maybe another way, a second way for me to yes, to 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 try to add something because this is this is the problem, uh, the, the problem that we 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 all have here because a lot of thousands of books, thousands of historians and and, and good ones. And in many languages, I mean, and so you have to think about the, the yes, how how can you add something useful, and how even how can you work widely and try to understand something. And when I was working on the water supply of Jerusalem, I yes, I was a lot yeah, I was very interested by the municipal history of the city. I was interested by this forgotten history because. It was largely forgotten the history of the of the of the municipality of Jerusalem, which is the oldest one in the Ottoman Empire, dated from uh, eighteen uh, 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 dated from uh, yeah uh, 18, 18, 60, 63. Uh, even before Istanbul, we have a municipality of in, in Jerusalem, which is a mixed one. It's not a perfect one, of course. There is a lot of problems there, but it was a place where the people. Uh, were seated once a week around a table dealing with the urban issues like uh, garbage, like sanitary conditions, like water supply, like public transport, like public tax, slaughters, everything. And uh, we don't have this institution now in 2021, as you know. Uh, we do have a municipality, but around the table you just have some Israeli people, and East Jerusalem is is not anymore in the in the municipal uh, process, and it's of course a big big issue, maybe the biggest issue, and everybody now is talking about always yes important issues, Aram and the, and the, and the holy places and so on. But I always said yeah, you do not have a shared municipality there. And without a shared municipality, you cannot you cannot progress in any in, 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 in any ways, even on the political, these very political and, 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 and symbolic uh, and sensitive issues. So the, the municipal the municipality of Jerusalem was uh, my my main uh, focus the, on, 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 on this. And about what you said, yeah, the the the, the, the history of possibilities, it's I had some some critics and and I, I received it as as good ones, but some people told me sometimes, yeah, you tried to write a pink history of Jerusalem, like, uh, and I said no. If you read the book, there is a lot of com conflict there, a lot of and 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 riots and the, but the the lines are not the same than today. I'm just saying that, and it was not just. Jewish and then against Palestinians. It, it was more, way more complex and way more rich, and the conflictualities were, were. The more you have conflictualities, the more you have solutions. <laughs> and the problem now is that we have one big conflict uh, above everything, and, and it's so it's very difficult to to deal with. So I just want you to to put some more complexities in this history and. Yes, I wrote it, I published it in 2000, 
2012, I think, yes, 12 in French. Uh, I was very happy because after that it was published, translated and published in Arabic in uh, Beirut uh, by Dar al Farabi and in Hebrew by Magnus Press University, uh, Magnus Press, uh, uh, which is uh, the, the, the editor of the Hebrew, U, uh, Hebrew University in Jerusalem. So for me, it was a kind of, yes, to have a book on the history of Jerusalem published in Arabic, in Arabic. Uh, in, in Beirut and in Hebrew in uh, in Jerusalem plus in English in Chicago it was I I think yes I was right I was not of course I was not the first one to tell this history but it's kind of synthesis book but maybe I I, I find I, I found the way to yes again to word something which was uh, on the table of of, of many searchers. And this question of possibilities, maybe it was an answer to my own, to our own sadness and desperation. It's like we we can see that the history of Jerusalem is not is not going in the good way. Let's say, let's say, put it simply. And just if you are thinking as an historian, knowing that sometimes you have experimentations historical experimentations, which failed, because it did fail. This, uh, the, the, the Ottoman municipalities disappeared and exploded uh, in uh, 1934. So during the mandate, you don't have any more uh, a shared municipality, so it failed. But maybe you can find there some ways to, yes, to, to get some hope for the future. This is the only pink history that I'm, uh, that I'm writing. It's maybe for the future. Yeah, <clears throat> I understand some of the criticism that you have received. Sometimes I, uh, I remember when I, when I read the book, there was the sense uh, that you were trying to paint things better than they were. But but you were right. I mean, there were many conflicts, and the fact there were many conflicts it meant that they were smaller and more manageable. Sometimes were due to property issues. <clears throat> even family conflicts. Uh, and often they were like either intercommunal or intracommunal, but they were managed by community, something that you no longer see nowadays in Jerusalem. Certainly we didn't see uh, since the mandate where obviously a larger conflict took over all of these micro uh, different issues. And I don't think that's really pink. It's more painting the reality of, uh, you know, urban conflicts as we saw in Jerusalem and in other parts uh, of the world, in many other cities. I just want to bring you to the other uh, big project that you've been working on for a number of years, which is Open Jerusalem. Uh, Open Jerusalem uh, is an uh, ERC-funded project. Um, and I don't want to say more than this because you probably have so many things to say about how this came about, how it developed, and also how it ended. So, Vincent, what is Open Jerusalem? We are going to take a short break. Thank you for listening. And remember to join our Facebook page, Twitter and Instagram account. If you have a story about Jerusalem that you want to share, or someone that you want me to interview, please get in touch. Enjoy the rest of the show. Uh, you know you know a lot of uh, Open Jerusalem uh... Roberto, because you were part of it, you were one of the, yes, not only the supporters, but you, you participated in it. This Open Jerusalem project, it was just after uh, Jerusalem 1900, because it, uh, I applied in 2012, so when Jerusalem 1900 was published. And I was here uh, for two years in Jerusalem as searcher on uh, CIG, and to tell the truth, I was uh, blocked. I, 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 I didn't. I was looking for a new project because I was here. I was paid for it. <laughs> you know how how we how we are and, and how we have to be. And I had no more ideas, like personal ideas. I was yeah. The water history is done. Jerusalem 1900 is done and. And I wanted to, to make something more 
huge, but not not because more huge and more global, and to understand globally the history of the city. And and I, I had the strategy, water history, okay, Jerusalem just 1900, okay, but what next? And I had the, the, the idea that I had to bring more people with me, around me, and I had to bring the, the big team uh, um, to, to work on this history of Jerusalem. And, and I had the experience that the, the issue of the archives was a very important one. Uh, like everywhere, but more than maybe more than everywhere. Why? Because archival stuff is, of course, a strategical issue everywhere, but more even more uh, here in Jerusalem. And second, because in Jerusalem you have archives, uh, a lot of archives outside Jerusalem, because even because of strategic, stra uh, geostrategical or geopolitics uh, issues. Uh, some institution here uh, get the ideas, and I think that you have the right that the papers has to to be outside Jerusalem. So you have you have a city, you have a global city with many people there, uh, talking many many languages, writing many many languages. So producing archives in many languages in very many alphabets, and when you are when you are an historian and you arrive, if you are Greek, you are working on the Greeks, just before you know the Greek language. And if you are Armenian, you work on the Armenians because you know the Armenian language. And because maybe, yes, you have more access to the archives and so on and so on. And, and even in the West Jerusalem, the, the Sephardim are, are working on the Sephardim and the Ashkenazim and the Ashkenazim and, and so on. I, I did the, the, the more and more I discovered that there, there was a lot of histories of Jerusalem, many, many, many thousands of histories, and everybody was working on, on the documents uh, which he has on his table, uh, on his desk, and, he, and, and maybe for political reason, but, but even uh, often for just linguistic reason. Uh, he was unable, an historian is unable just to look to, to the table of his just neighbor because it's, it's written in a different language and even he don't know what it's, what is the topic of this very document. So the idea of the Open Jerusalem project was to bring together a, a, a huge team. Uh, the team, the world team is something like 60 people from 60 searchers from around 15 countries. Uh, and to deal with this, one only issue is the, the archival issue. And this, this was the first idea. And the second one was not to focus on the question of this digitalization. And to begin with the description of the archives, because we discovered that many, many projects uh, spent many, many times and money and energy uh, for digitizing uh, archives without even knowing what there was, what there was written, and plus, when you are talking about digitalization with a lot of institutions here in Jerusalem, but everywhere, sometimes it could be difficult because when you digitize some papers, in a way you you take it, you take it. So the 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 strategy was was that, and I think it was the only good idea in, the, in this project. It was the good idea on the, in, in this project. It was to begin with. Uh, 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 an outside and inside description of, of the documentation in Jerusalem, in East Jerusalem, in West Jerusalem, uh, around Jerusalem, and in Russia, and in St. Petersburg, and in Rome, and in, in Paris, and in London, and in Istanbul, and in Amman, and Addis Abeba, and in Washington. And, yeah, it's endless. It's endless. It, uh, of course, we. And so the result is now on the website uh, uh, www.openjerusalem.org. And here you can find something like uh, 39,000 yes, 39, uh, 39, documents described. And the third idea was we will describe this document in English, which is, which is a scandal, as uh, an archivist scandal, because as an archivist, you, have, you, you must describe the document in the same language, then. In the document. And it makes sense because 
as soon as you translate it, even the description, even the, the title, even the you lost some some information, and 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 you and you put some yes, you put some uh, noise noise in the, in the description. Everybody knows that, but I I was thinking that there was a biggest issue, and the biggest issue was the historian of Jerusalem. If he is working on I don't know if he's working on water supply, he must if he can type water and he will have hundreds of documents from from dozens of communities and after after that it, after that he has a description he has a summary of the document and he can say oh but i have a friend who can read some uh, armenian or i have another one who can who knows someone who can read the gaze or the amharic or someone you, you we have a network we have but the first step is to to to, to have the first access to the document so this was the strategy it was, it was a crazy project. It was a huge one, five years. So from 2014 to 2019. Uh, thanks God, it was before this this uh, COVID-19 crisis because I don't know how many planes I took, and sometimes just for two days or three days in Ethiopia, and another two days in Saint Petersburg. It was crazy. I, we we had to go everywhere. To work with the insiders, this, this was another idea. The, another idea was not to build to, to build the to build the the team from below and from the field. And really, we did it, which is we 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 arrived in uh, I don't know in in Yerevan, for example, or Chiyazin in Armenia, and asked, "What do you have? And do you have people there who do work or or might work?" and well, and and we can we can pay for we can pay for for this work and we can share the the results and so it 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 was a building it was a trust building process uh, and and the scientific one and um, I think we did succeed uh, the website is working it is working very well uh, I know that the, it's it's uh, a lot of people are using it. Uh, there is more, much more digitalized archives than we thought at the beginning, because if you look at the website, one third of the document do have some digitalization uh, uh, version. So, so it's it's good, and and every month we add some more uh, stuff. For example, in the coming months we will add all the Jordanian uh, Jerusalem municipality archives in the website, which will be a huge uh, step forward because, as you know, Roberto, of course, the history of the Jordanian uh, East Jerusalem is, is a dark uh, period. We, we, it's not a dark period, as it's, it's, it's a gray period. We don't know any, almost anything about that. And so we, we did describe all the municipal archives, uh, which are here uh, in the Israeli municipal, uh, municipality. And we will put it on the website, and we do hope that some more historians, master, PhD, every everything, uh, seniors uh, will work on this uh, Jordanian history of Jerusalem, for example. I have a question about the material. Working on archives, it means you're working on paper, and for many people out there, archives are just these uh, sort of, uh, you know, buildings where there's a lot of paper. What people may not understand is that actually those papers are about real life or about people. So I was wondering in your experience, how do we translate that paper into the life of people? Because sometimes it seems there's a disconnect. But as we see now with the current situation in Jerusalem, particularly in Sheikh Jarrah, actually documents are relevant to people in real life. Yeah, you ask an excellent and big, big uh, question and challenge. Because when you are dealing with archives, as you said, yes, you are dealing with papers, but more than that, you are dealing with institutions. Those institutions are producing archives. Private people are not. Or, or yes, academics sometimes but, uh, but yes, the, first of all, the, the institution are producing archives. So when you are focusing on archives, 
of course, you are focusing on institutional history. And it could be, yes, it could be a, yeah, it could be a problem. And we have to find ways, as you said, to, to build some links between this institutional history and archive, we have to, to assume it, and, and, and everyday life history and, and, and the people, uh, yeah, as you, as you said, Cher Jaray, for example, if you, if you type Cher Jaray on the Open uh, Jerusalem website, you will find some document and you will find some something to think about the, the current situation. So, but still, you're absolutely right. We ended the Open Jerusalem project in 19, uh, in, uh, in, 2000, uh, in, uh, in 2019, because yeah, it was the end of the, the funding. And we knew that we had, yeah, we had done the, the first step. And still, we made, we made a lot of effort to make it like a public, what, what we call public history. But still, still, there is, there is a lot of work to do. And uh, there is a lot of work to do. Maybe one, one, one way could be to, to work on 3D reconstruction of the Jerusalem of that time and to put some archives on it and ask people to put some personal family history on it and so on. This is a kind of thing that, that we are thinking about. There is a lot of project uh, around, uh, around this, this challenge. Uh, for example, uh, I know that you received uh, Marie Velma O'Neill uh, weeks ago and she is working on the Mogabe neighborhood around this kind of strategy. How how to how to 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 build some links between the, the yeah the big institutional history and the everyday history and uh, it's a very important issue in Jerusalem it's a, it's very risky mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very risky because as soon as you as you ask people to 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 to, to take part in the process. Yes, you will have a lot of noise, you will have a lot of conflict, you will have a lot of mis misunderstanding, and you will have a lot of everything. <laughs> but now, because the Open Jerusalem project is, yes, it's, it's stable, it's done, it's, we have it. We are thinking, this is a scoop that I, 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 I tell to, the, to, to, the, to your podcast, uh, dear Roberto, we are uh, thinking about a, a second step, and maybe it will be a, a huge one. Maybe it will be a huge one, when I say huge one, I'm thinking about European funding. I'm thinking about because, yeah, it's not just let's put uh, these results on a more uh, friendly website. It's not uh, this kind of issue. We are talking about how to involve people, how to to build a, an excellent app that you can add on your iPhone or your uh, cell phone and in the street, and how you can get the information, how you how you put the archives as 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 you put how you put links between the archives and the place where you are working uh, in the old city and so on. So it's a huge huge uh, issue and we are dealing with it. And but, yeah, the, we have to find we we do have partners, but of course there is a lot of political issue in in, in this uh, in this uh, uh, idea. But we are thinking about it and. You're perfectly right. This is the, the second step that we that we do have to, to, to move on. Yeah. I have a couple of more questions before the end of this interview. You just talked about Open Jerusalem, opening the archives, and it, that made me think that uh, for some people, opening the archives is to find uh, that kind of history that you don't want to hear about. Archives may be a fearful place, a place where you find something that tells you something different from what you learned in school, from what uh, your family told you, from what you, you, your friends and neighbors told you about, uh, you know, where you live. So I was wondering, you know, Open Jerusalem is such a powerful project and idea. What were the challenges, how people reacted to your idea of opening? To be honest, we didn't get a lot of public reactions. I don't know if it's good news or bad news. Uh, really, I don't know. It's it's both. I think uh, it's a good news because yeah, it's, it's open Jerusalem is, is a safe 
zone is a safe place. Uh, it's an academic work, and so we are not attacked by any any side. The bad news is the the, the, the yeah the, the other question. The bad news is that the, we we need we need to take this risk. We need to to make the people of Jerusalem, the peoples of Jerusalem, east, west, and not only east, west, but everywhere, in every kind of people and in, in every communities, uh, looking inside uh, the documents. And as you said, some sometimes you find what you want to find, and sometimes you find another thing. And it's not so, we are historians, so we know how to deal with this uh, kind of surprises. This is our, this is an ethical, yes, it is our ethical uh, engagement. But when you're just a citizen, you go to the archives to find, uh, for example, to find your right, your rights. And if you don't find it, if you, give, if you, can, if you find rights for, for uh, other people or other neighbors, it could be, uh, it could be difficult for you. So, but we, we did try to, for example, we published with, uh, with uh, uh, two colleagues uh, a, a short book about the Ethiopian community uh, in Jerusalem, uh, which is not so well known. Everybody come on the rooftop of the Holy Sepulchre, but that's, yeah, yeah, you make, uh, you have two, uh, two features. Oh, wow, it's strange. They're on the, they're on the rooftop and they go back uh, downstairs and, and, and back to the Holy Sepulchre. And, but the history of the Ethiopian community in Jerusalem is, is, is crazy and it's linked with so many, many, uh, so many, again, so many big histories in Jerusalem. And so we published this book just to, yes, to try to have a quality approach, qualitative approach on one single community. Again, it's an academic work and I'm, I'm not sure that, but it will be, pub now it's published in, in French and it, translated in English and it will be published by Brill uh, in English next year in the Open Jerusalem uh, uh, film. But uh, yes, we, we do we do try to to for example, for example, you, you ask for uh, about the reactions. And it's exactly it's exactly that that challenge. We 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 go to the to the Ethiopian monks and ask them do you want to be on the picture or not? This is, it, it's, it's a provocative question, but it, it is. And there is an only way to be on the picture is to, to show us the archives. And some of these archives will be good for you. And some of these archives will be not so good. But this is the, yeah, this is the, this is the game. <laughs> And they, we convinced them, and they, they yes, we, we have to be on the picture. And of course, the Ethiopian especially, because, because they, it's, uh, their position is not so sure. They are not, they are on the roof, rooftop. They are, they are, there is a Coptic there, the Armenian there, the Greek everywhere. And so, for the, for the Ethiopian, it was not so 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 easy. So so so, so they decided to work with us, and they are very happy to. Because they, because just because they they discovered that that the work is honest, just honest. It's just serious. It's just scientifically, uh, yes, robust. And so they can bring something, and they can they can take the book and read it, and even take what what is useful for for, for them. It's everybody can. It's in in this book, but in every in every books that we wrote, Roberto. Everybody can open it and use the sentences which are useful for their uh, for their uh, fight, and it's it's okay. We don't have to we don't have to to, to complain about it. I, I must say that part of the Open Jerusalem project is this uh, idea of not making claims, which I really appreciated. That instead of writing history with the purpose of making one claim, uh, Open Jerusalem produced works that are. You know, publish with a purpose to talk about issues and to show the material in the archives. I have one last question, and it's connected to your work, but also to your personal life. Now, Open Jerusalem deals with a question of uh, citadinite, a very difficult word to translate into English, which is the idea of belonging to an urban environment. 
So I was wondering, do you belong to Jerusalem? And when you go around Jerusalem, what are your favorite spots? Again, I will try to be as honest as possible. I no, I yeah, no and yes. I no because I have because I'm French, because I'm European, because so I have some privilege as as a French, as a European here, I can travel uh, everywhere. Uh, comparing, for example, with the East. Uh, Jerusalem population. Of course, I cannot say that uh, that I am as in, I am a Jerusalemite as them. This is the very first answer, and it's very important. And even more than that, I'm working as director of CRFG. I have a diplomatic protection. So, so the first answer is no. And in this no, there is an ethical uh, yes. There is an ethical. Uh, um, engagement which is I, I, I don't want to I don't want to think that I am uh, yes I am mixed and I'm living with with the population of Jerusalem because I'm not I'm just looking to the history of Jerusalem from the outside and sometimes when you look from the outside you see some things that you just cannot see from the inside and uh, in Paris, in Paris, I don't see, I don't see anything. I don't, I can understand some things, but I'm not seeing it. And sometimes when I'm here in Jerusalem for, for too long times, I'm not seeing as well as before. Uh, this is a very, very touchy issue, but the outsider and insider and in, in, in every topic. And, uh, but in France, if we even had uh, Robert Paxton for, re-explaining us the, 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 the period the, of the Second World War, uh, we still, maybe we were still in the same, uh, yeah, in the same weird uh, debates. So this, the first answer is no, I'm looking at the history of Jerusalem from the, from the outside. And the second is yes, because, uh, yes, because I'm here, uh, I'm here for uh, more than 20 years because I'm always coming back here. And if you are asking the yes, the place, if you are asking the place, uh, there is a lot of ah, it's let's say like that. There is a lot of place that I like, and I it's it's outside places. <laughs> it's places when I look to Jerusalem from the outside. One 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 is far away. It's uh, Nabi Samuel. Uh, uh, Mountain, as you know, is it's high, much much higher than Jerusalem. It's uh, it's Mont Gaudi, Mont Joie, uh, Mount, and uh, there is uh, there you have uh, you have a church and you have uh, a synagogue and you have a mosque and it's it's a very very uh, inspiring uh, place. So I I like to bring uh, yes uh, my my friends uh, there to look at Jerusalem from from far away. Um, and in in Jerusalem, I can just say that there is a place that I don't like, and I think maybe a lot of people don't like this place. Where the a place where I am uncomfortable, and I know a lot of, for example, Jewish people and even observant Jewish people are not comfortable with, which is the Wailing Wall, Plaza, because it's uh, it's mix of a lot of things, and because I did work for for uh, several years now on the Mogabe neighborhood, which was just uh, on the on the uh, on the on the Wedding Hall Plaza uh, till the Six Day War, and when I'm in this place, I remember that that I think every historian of Jerusalem has to remember every day, every hour, this city uh, described as an eternal city where heritage is everywhere, blah, 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 is, is a city where everything is transforming uh, every decades, every centuries, every, it's not an eternal city, it's a very, very historical city and we have to deal with it. And uh, even with the, with the, yes, with the more yeah, the more difficult part of this history, and of course, the history of the Mogadi neighborhood and the Wailing Wall Plaza is, is is a part of it. 
this will be my next uh, step and more difficult and more touchy than the than the steps before but yes we have to move forward we have to we have to grow up <laughs> so this was Vincent Lemire currently the director of the Sander Richard Francesa Jerusalem author of a number of publications and the upcoming work on the Maghrebi quarter which will probably be the subject of another full interview but just dedicated to it Vincent thank you so much thank you so much Roberto Thank you for listening to Jerusalem Unplugged. This podcast is currently commercial free. There are no ads. The only possibility to stay this way is for you to please let your friends, your family and others who may be interested in listening to Jerusalem Unplugged know about this podcast. Let's increase the audience and let's keep the podcast commercial free. Thank you for listening. Until the next one.